Hey YouTube, bringing you a video here, kind of showing our daily chores, what we do uh, every afternoon when we come home from work. Uh, we haven't talked to you a whole lot about our situation and some of the things that we're doing and, and whatnot, but both uh, Mrs. Tactical Homesteader and myself, we both work full-time jobs. Uh, I commute about 30 minutes to work there and back. Uh, her commute is about 20 minutes there and back. Um, so uh, we have to make sure that we're really efficient, taking care of things in the in the evenings and everything and uh, whatnot with our animals. And so, uh, a lot of what our channel is going to be about is, uh, you know, just just how you manage a, a homestead with the full time responsibilities. Now, I know a lot of folks out there are doing a lot of similar things on YouTube and whatnot, but uh, haven't really found uh, a whole lot of folks that are showing it from the perspective of. You know, a family where uh, both uh, both parents are uh, are, are full time uh, employees somewhere else. Uh, you know, nobody's here at the home uh, dedicated to doing this during the day. So everything we're doing is pretty much, uh, you know, uh, in the evenings, uh, in the mornings before work. Uh, you know, uh, on the weekends, all of our projects and everything like that, we kind of have to plan out and make sure that uh, you know we're taking care of those things uh, on the weekends as needed. Um, so kind of makes uh, uh, <clears throat> getting uh, major projects accomplished, uh, you know, kind of challenging. So, you know, we're kind of struggling some some of those things, and uh, we're going to show you guys a little bit about, you know, our successes and our failures and and all that kind of stuff. So I just took care of the rabbits uh, there in our rabbit tractor. Those are our meat rabbits. Uh, those should be going to slaughter here sometime soon. Um, uh, we've got another, another video that was posted a couple of days ago where I kind of went through my rabbit tractor and all that. So I don't really want to talk about that a whole lot. So kind of got everything over here grouped together, uh, trying to manage it as best as possible so that uh, as we're putting food out for one, we can put out food out for the other. Uh, this is going to get easier over time. Uh, in my last poultry video, talked a little bit about at the end of the video uh, about our upcoming chicken coop we're going to get here at the end of July. And uh, we're really excited about that. It's going to hold about uh, 25 to 30 birds, we're hoping, laying hens and maybe one, uh, two roosters. Um, we're going to be building some paddocks and things around that to kind of be able to let them have uh, some uh, pasture area off their main run uh, that's around the chicken coop there. So uh, as we get that get that accomplished, we'll end up getting uh, all these uh, small chicks. Uh, we'll have grown up a little bit and uh, we'll get them all combined into one area. So won't have near as much work there. Talk to you a little bit about what we're doing. We have a mister system. We've seen our rabbit video where we talk about how we raise our uh, rabbits. You know, we've got a mist system for our hot uh, summer days. It kind of keeps the rabbits cool and uh, it's a challenge with the food and whatnot to, to kind of keep it dry. Normally we take it out uh, and, and don't leave it in during the day. Uh, it looks like this time we forgot and so uh, we had to kind of shake some of the uh, wet food out of there and kind of get it replaced. Again, some of the hay that we put in here, we put fresh hay in for them uh, on a constant basis, uh, as well as you know the occasional grass clippings. Uh, so we got to clean that out when it gets too wet. Um, talk a little bit about the you know we got a nesting box here. So this rabbit uh, was expected to have had uh, uh, a litter of uh, babies uh, over this last weekend, and that did not happen. So apparently she was not bred. And uh, that was the uh, third attempt to breed her, so she'll likely be cold uh, along with the, the bunnies in the, uh, in the, in the uh, rabbit tractor here sometime in the next few days. So uh, we're disappointed that she didn't have any. She's the only doe that we have that has not uh, produced a litter. Uh, all of the other ones have produced a litter for us and uh, have done really well as, as a mother. So. Uh, it's really important, uh, you know, we, we've got the water uh, coming in from the mist systems, you know, kind of wetting some of that hay down inside there. So you kind of got to clean that out. Um, it kind of gums up their manure inside, doesn't allow it to fall through the grates. So we kind of we have to make sure that we're getting uh, all of their manure taken care of, making sure it drops down below so they're not uh, just kind of hanging out in their own filth. Uh, it's a lot, uh, uh, it's a lot more healthy for them. Um, down below, you can see um, the the bins we have. Uh, I did not talk about this in our uh, uh, rabbit video where we discussed the rabbits and the rabbit hutch, but we basically uh, got a good deal on some totes from a, a retailer in town and uh, bought a whole bunch of them. And uh, that's what we use to catch the manure underneath. Um, 
Uh, the uh, chickens really, really love it when we uh, dump those out for them. Uh, eventually, we're going to compost that, you know, use some of it in our gardening and, and whatnot, which we haven't done just yet. Um, but, but man, the chickens love that. There's, there's, there's all kinds of worms and, and uh, creepy crawlies that are, that are uh, crawling around down in there and underneath the bins as well. So whenever we uh, clean those out every couple of weeks and dump them out, uh, the chickens that are free ranging, they just, they just go crazy and love it. So, uh, you know, it's just kind of helping to kind of recycle everything that we, that we do here and ha let it have a benefit for, for uh, you know, from one animal to the next. Um, and then again, we're going to go, uh, We'll start composting that eventually, and uh, building soil in our gardens and and uh, whatnot. So you know everything's got a purpose, everything's got a place. So it's just trying to make sure we get organized and get some of that stuff in place. One of the things you'll notice is uh, our various uh, trash cans that we have uh, around uh, all where all the animals are. Uh, I, I've lost count of how many of these things we have. Uh, these were the best deal that we've uh, found in order to be able to, to kind of set ourselves up to take care of the uh, animals efficiently. Uh, you know, they're watertight, rainproof, uh, they're animal proof, uh, you know, the lid's locked down. Uh, these are the, I believe they're uh, the Brute brand we get at Sam's Club. Uh, earlier this year, Sam's Club ran a deal where they had these things. I think normally they're probably in the $15 to $20 range. Uh, Sam was running a uh, deal where they had them for, for $9 a piece, and we loaded up on them. So like I said, I've lost count of how many we have. You know, we keep the, the chicken feed, chicken scratch in it. You know, we keep uh, the rabbit food in it. Uh, we have hay we bring down from the barn. and allows us to keep hay close to the animals uh, so that we can keep it dry. Um, the lids locked down, keep uh, raccoons and any kind of uh, unwanted critters uh, out of the food. You know, we have goat feed in it, uh, you know, dog food for our livestock dogs, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, I didn't mention there, one of the things uh, you probably saw there is, is lots of the milk, milk jugs on the ground for the water. So uh, eventually we're going to get to a deal where we've got uh, some uh, automatic waterers and everything for our rabbits and, and kind of try to automate that a little bit and uh, make it a little bit easier on us. But one of the things we found is just, you know, once or twice a week, we'll fill all those milk jugs up and just kind of leave them sitting out there. And it works really great for us uh, from a standpoint of just having it available. We just walk out there, just grab the next one uh, that's laying there on the ground, fill it up and whatnot. Um, you know, it just makes it really easier as we're going around from the various chickens to the rabbits and, and all that. Um, so, uh, getting a little goat feed out here. Uh, this time of year, you know, there's plenty of pasture for them. We're, you know, paddocking them back and forth. So really not giving them a whole lot. What we got there in that last barrel was a mixture of some sweet feed, uh, just along with some of their regular feed. And then here's some of the larger 12% uh, uh, pellets. And uh, just kind of taking them a couple handfuls of that over to their feeding troughs and uh, uh, I'm going to set them up. Uh, we do have uh, the, uh, the black and white one that you've seen in the frame there as well as the, the, the brown one. They're both uh, an alpine mix, uh, a couple different breeds of uh, milk goat there. Um, I think they're mixed with a Nigerian dwarf, so they're kind of they're a little bit smaller but not, a, not quite as small as the Nigerians. Uh, we think both of them are pregnant. We think she may be due uh, here sometime in October, or I'm sorry, not October, in, in August. Uh, the other one, maybe, you know, a month or two after that. But, uh, so, well, again, they're supposed to be pasturing right now because she is, uh, uh, you know, pregnant and expecting to, to kid out here within a month or two. You know, we're just trying to just give her just a little bit of extra nutrition and whatnot to, uh, to kind of help her along the way. Um, so if you haven't kept goats before, goats are uh, notoriously hard on your fences. So you notice that every time I go through one of these fences, you know, we're locking it back. Uh, the goats, uh, they're, they're, they're incredibly intelligent creatures. They're smart and they know how to, uh, they know when you unlock the gate. And if you don't lock both of them back, uh, walk away for 30 seconds, they will get out. So uh, always, uh, we're always conscious about making sure when we go through the gate, uh, make sure we lock it behind ourselves. Uh, as you can see here, we've got our uh, Great Pyrenees puppies. Again, I mean, right now our our, our chores are kind of a little bit uh, long because uh, you know we've got extra things going on here. Puppies are not something we normally have. This is our uh, first try at it. We're actually going to keep the male from this litter uh, and add as a second livestock guardian. Uh, the rest will sell. 
Uh, if you happen to be interested in uh, near northwest Arkansas or southwest Missouri, northeast Oklahoma, somewhere in this area, and you're interested in, uh, in purchasing one of our females uh, that we'll be selling, uh, we have three still available. So, uh, you know, send us a message here on uh, YouTube, and we'd be happy to get back with you. Um, they're uh, full blood. Uh, they're not registered. Uh, our uh, female there, Sierra, is about 16 uh, months old. She's probably 110 to 120 pounds. The male that was bred to to her was a, a, a large Pyrenees, a great big, uh, great big forehead, prominent, you know, uh, prominent brow there. You know, the the typical livestock guarding dog. You know, he's probably 150, 160 pound dog, a large animal, super sweet, um, but did his job while he was here. Uh, being bred um, and so he, he you know didn't bother our animals at all and uh, so if you're interested let us know so you know we're just kind of uh, taking care of the puppies here you know give them a little bit of uh, canned dog food uh, can to split between all uh, all five puppies a little bit of uh, mush here uh, water in the dry food uh, they enjoy that as well and they just enjoy a little bit of attention uh, super sweet curious fun to be around and just look like po little polar bears and uh, it's been an adventure. First time we've ever uh, raised puppies from birth and, uh, you know, all kinds of things to learn, but I think we're succeeding at it pretty good, so. Real brief, I uh, just want to kind of let you know what we got coming up. We're going to be doing a video here pretty soon uh, talking about uh, what you're going to be seeing on our channel. Uh, kind of give a background on where we came from and why we're doing this and all the things that we hope to accomplish. We've only been here about 13 months now. We moved out from, uh, you know, the, the pretty much the city, uh, well, as city as uh, Northwest Arkansas gets, moved out into the country to, to kind of start our rural life and homestead and, and provide a little bit of, a, uh, you know, nutrition and uh, value, uh, you know, sustainability for ourselves out here. So we're going to be doing a lot of projects. We're going to be showing those. Uh, we're going to be kind of talking about some of our plans and just, uh, you know, what our philosophies are and, you know, what we look to accomplish. So, uh, Hope you uh, like what you see. Hope you uh, you know are interested in finding out what we're doing in the future. There's going to be some successes. There's going to be some failures. We're going to show a little bit of all of it. And uh, you know, comments and questions are welcome on all our videos. You know, sure, sure do appreciate the comments we've got so far. You know, tips and tricks with the tractors and whatnot. And uh, you know, pretty much everything we're doing. You know, we're going to try to kind of be a be an open book on a lot of it, you know, just to kind of help you guys figure out what uh, you should be doing and, uh, you know, help, you know, let you guys help us figure out what we should be doing. So if you like, please subscribe and uh, like our video. And as always, thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.